Start recording in five, four, three, two. Shalom, everybody. Welcome to House to House Discipleship Institute's Terror Bite, where we encourage you to become a threat, a terror, and a revenger to the kingdom of darkness. We want to thank you and welcome to the new people who are watching this. This is Elder Apostle Robert Gonzalez, also in Hebrew known as Menechem Yah. My name is Elder Joshua Malara, and also we would like to say, don't change the channel, don't hit the, you know, switch the video, and most of all, don't call us late for dinner. <laughs> and, but we just want to say, uh, that's just the character we are, we love you, we want to encourage you and uplift you with the word of Yahuwah and esteem you greater than ourselves. Amen. Amen. And uh, Dr. Robert Gonzalez and I are uh, servant sons of the Most High. So we choose to be servants, but at the same time, when the Father appoints us to become sons, we represent Him. Amen. Amen. Dr. Amen. Gonzalez. Amen. How's everybody this evening? A uh, lot, of, lot of things, a lot of things happening in the spirit, as you and I know. Uh, uh, the Gregorian calendar, the world is setting themselves up for a festive Christmas. They go out and uh, buy. Uh, gifts for one another getting dead they're all bummed out for a year because you know they, they just unwisely go out and buy things that are not even uh, biblical they're not even yah inspired so i'm thinking what can i tell the people that may be feeling the intensity of trying to drive you to your men's clothing store to buy shirts for the guys you know the men in your lives whether it's a husband a son a son-in-law brother-in-law see it goes on and on uh, friends cousins see it just it keeps perpetuating and so we get deeper in debt but then we're wise so then we uh, try to uh, get all our credit cards and put them together because you know they offer these plans to get you out of debt so you uh what's the term they use um in the credit line uh the consolidate see that's a wonderful term consolidate mm -hmm. so i got to thinking uh if you don't have a foundation no matter how deep of consolidation you go through all you're building is a, a good edifice for destruction you know, one of the things that the Father uses is foundational principles to get you to start building the temple, the house that He wants to dwell in. So construction's a good word. Uh, instruction is a better word. So you're, there's instruction for construction, and those two principles remove destruction because mm. you can be under construction and still have a faulty foundation so what you're mm -hmm. building will fall apart when the storm comes so there's a story in the book of Ruth Naomi Ruth Orpha and uh, these two girls had husbands they died Naomi's husband died and and so they were totally in a place of uh, Bethlehem Judah you know bread and praise and they left there to go to a place called Moab. And Moab means to be at ease. And I think the, the what you and I would call church and the Christian entity today is at ease. See, we've gotten so far away from apostolic foundational order that when you hear those terms, you immediately think, Oh, we already did that last year, or we already did that 10 years ago, or oh, we already did that, we know about that, but you're not really living the life of apostolic foundation, okay? For instance, in the third chapter uh, of Corinth, the, the Shiliac Saul begins to instruct the people on how to build, not to build on another man's foundation, but to build on the foundation that was laid by the chief cornerstone, Yeshua HaMashiach. And as we plant and water, he brings in the increase. He who, he, Yahuwah. 
Yahuwah is the Father. Even the Son said, why do you marvel at the things that I do? I only am doing those things that I see the Father do and those things that I hear the Father say That's is good. what I say. So these are foundational principles that you and I uh, need to um, you know, honor and gleam on and hold on to and fasten ourselves to so that you won't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. doctrine. See, we're not talking about doctrine. We're talking about a relationship. We're not talking about religion. We're talking about a relationship. We're not talking about views and conduct and customs and traditions. We're talking about a relationship. The father-son relationship is all through scripture. And if you can see it, most of us can't see it. This is why we keep uh, perpetrating and we keep teaching the false. We, we, it, it, there's a lot of terminology that sounds so powerful. It sounds so good. And you can fire people up. You can wire people up because their souls are truly seeking and searching for truth, for manna that is from heaven, Shamaim. And they're just getting manna that's from the back door, manna that's uh, in the closet, manna that's, uh, you know, kept in a uh, airtight container, let's say Tupperware. <laughs> but when you pop it open, it's just, oh, it's not fresh. You can just tell, no, I don't want none of that. But this is what we've been uh, portraying and giving to the set-apart people, which you and I should be calling the yeah sons of Yahuwah, the sonship message. Most of us don't even understand what the sonship message is, but when you sit under true apostolic ministry, true Shiliac ministry, the seal of sonship is so deeply burnt into your soul, your mind, will, and emotions that you can't have anything else but that. You look forward to an apostolic seed. You look forward to having manna from heaven. You look forward to having uh, this supernatural insight that the Father gives you because you're submitted to the Father-Son relationship. Yes, you may have a mentor. Yes, you may have a coach. Yes, you may have a, a life coach because they even use that term today. And But you need a true father in the faith. Not one that will control you, but one that will correct you. Because, see, you didn't need anybody to, to show you the way to destruction. You were moving in that on your own. But when we come to the foot of the cross, when we come to the foot of the tabernacle, you see the, the brass brazen altar. The brazen altar speaks about where animal sacrifice was. There's a grid on it like a barbecue and they constantly put wood in it to keep it burning because at any given time, remember, the priests were constantly putting animals for sacrifices for the people on that. Well, bringing it up to par and to speed, Yeshua HaMashiach became the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world and when he laid on Calvary's cross when he laid himself on the stake that was his brazen altar with manifestation the brazen altar that you and I see in scripture was a type and shadow of him going to the stake okay so we grown up with all these terms and, and terminologies and we got to go back to just seeing what the scripture I remember one of the verses that Paul the Apostle wrote in uh, the book of Galatians he talks about how he hung on a tree so why did we stray away from the tree that even the uh, the Sheliac Saul said it in one of the letters as he's in in the Galatian jail uh, because he wanted us to, to see that he was fighting for the liberty of the true Nazarenes that were protectors of Torah, protectors of truth. The lie came in through the Catholicism, through Constantine. They changed it. This is why they even crucified Peter on a cross upside down to make it so significant that only 
only their Jesus, I'm saying their Jesus because they're the ones that created the false term, the false name. I know that hurt some of you and I apologize for that, but I don't apologize because the truth and the facts are he died on a stake, not a cross. And that was the subliminal lie that was fed through media, through books, through music, through everything and anything that could cause an eruption in you to have almost like a physical uh, vein exploding. They call it a, um, uh, what's the term? Um, oh my, my right brain just went right there. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if you remember an aneurysm, thank you very much. You have a mental aneurysm because the seed that is traveling within your mind, there's nothing that bears witness. See, and your spirit man in you is trying to receive that seed that is coming through the minister or the ministry of men and women disciples, leaders, pastors, uh, evangelists, teachers, prophets, apostles, bishops, all the categories that you and I know according to the scripture. But in Ephesians it says, unless you, uh, you know, since he, Yeshua HaMashiach is the chief cornerstone and you build with the foundational building blocks of apostle, prophet, uh, Shiliak and Navim, as you're building with that, then you begin to see a greater, um, a greater needle with the, the red thread going through and you start seeing it. And this is what the father's wanting to convey to all his sons and daughters that read scripture, that are, have been set apart, called, making their election selection sure, knowing that there's a more sure word of prophecy. So prophecy is not of a private in interpretation. Prophecy is a word given to whomsoever has uh, emunah. That's what opens it. It opens it up so that your spirit can bear witness with the words that come out of a Ahan Navim's mouth, the pay. And so here again, we're, we're at a standstill. If you are listening and seeing everything that's happening, even uh, some of our uh, Christian media that, you know, some of the big names, TBN and some of the others, uh, the God Channel, all the other ones, they're, they're not doing anything. They're not saying anything. They're just repeating with new faces. <laughs> everything they had before mm -hmm. they're just they fired everybody and they hired new faces why because the old had they weren't saying anything that was relevant and prevalent to changing the atmosphere the conduct the contour and the, you know of a person you know so here here we are we were stuck we're stuck in the middle of a war and the wars between our ears we don't know to turn left or right because we don't have the tongue of the learned or the ear of the learned. And that's something we've got to press into. The kingdom suffers violent and the violent take it by force. And when you understand what he said by that, he was saying that there's not many that Toshiva, okay, that just want to go ahead and turn back to dust so that he can start the cycle over, your life cycle. Because you got to, unless a, a grain of seed fall into the ground willingly, it'll abide alone. And if you abide alone, you can't produce seed because you're abiding alone. But if you died willingly, then the Father can use that death to resurrect and bring forth more seed. And that's why the kingdom suffers violent because it's seeking to receive seed and we're not giving anyone seed. Seed to reproduce after his image and likeness, seed to reproduce after his character, seed to reproduce after his nature, seed that reproduces, yeah, character, nature, and function. So with that family, I pray and and we give you all the, the, the uh, how can I put it, all the mercy that the Father has stretched his arms around all of us that he can squeeze us all together and make us one. The son cried out in John 17. The son cried out in John 6. 
The son said, man, behold, thou hast to eat my flesh and drink my blood. If you don't do this, you have no part with me nor with him who sent me. And see, we got to go back to the general principles that, that that which is concrete. Are you listening to me? Concrete is a function in scripture. You know, there's a, I, I did a teaching years ago. It was called uh, Executing the Apostolate. Mm. And, and to execute the apostolate, you have to be sent. And when you're sent, those that receive you receive him who sent you. But see, we don't want to go out over um, to the edge of the branch because it might break. But it doesn't matter if it breaks and you die, you just re <laughs> you return back to the cycle. You become like a fertilizer for the tree of life. See, your death brings forth life. And because he said, I'm the resurrection, even if you're dead, you shall live and not die. So there's a, there's a powerful spiritual impartation that comes to those that are seeking him and pressing in. I got my new toy, it came in uh, last week. Uh, and so, you know, I, I got one and I just want to thank all of you for continually seeking and, and searching. This is the hallelujah scriptures. This is where uh, we get a lot of uh, our stuff and you hear it here uh, in the scripture. And uh, tonight I just wanted you to know that the Father says, tonight's your night for healing. Tonight's your night for healing. If you are willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Tonight is your night for healing. Let this terabyte be in you. Which terabyte am I talking about? The master himself. The one that whose nature is being embedded in you. His character is being flawlessly embedded in you and his Function. There's no variableness, no t shadow of turning concerning his function. If he said what he said, he's going to make it good. So you've got to not cast your expectation away. You've got to hold on with emuna and know that it's about to turn towards you. Everything you've desired, everything you thought about, everything you dreamed about, every open vision that you've seen, this year is about to come into a better place. And the reason I'm saying this year is because the, the new year is from a Hebrew standpoint. We've already went through it and we're moving now to what we would call the Passover feast. The Passover feast. So this is why the death angel will pass over you. But see, since that's already occurred and you're moving in the book of remembrance, according to Malachi, every time you remember yourself to the headship principles and the body, they are many members, but they really are one you will see glimpses of the word becoming flesh. You're the vessel, you're the vehicle, you're the mishkan, you're the temple, you're the tabernacle, you're everything the Father has need of to make himself present on this planet. You have an assignment and without confinement, you will never, never see your assignment come to pass. That's why we here at House to House Discipleship Institute, we try to teach you terminology that goes with scripture concerning true apostolic and prophetic, true Sheliac and Navim, true Sheliac and Navim. I know we've heard the terms uh, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but those were all coined by the Jesuit priest under Constantine way back in the days and he's still been ruling and reigning not he as Constantine but the spirit of Constantine the spirit of Catholicism the spirit of deception the spirit of strong delusion the spirit of trickery this is why you need to get into a house that is teaching the truth so that truth will make you free if you continue in my word then you are my disciple if you continue in my word then pick up your cross follow me 
Now you see, now if, if you understood what I said earlier, that the, the whole cross conception was false. It was a stake. It was a tree. So if you pick up your cross, but you can identify to it as being a stake, being a tree, then you're pulling down strongholds in your mind that have laid there dormant for years. I'm talking about years, family. Mm -hmm. Years. This is why I'm talking about executing the apostolate. The apostolate, it gets rid of the stuff that we drag along. The past is no longer part of us. We should be living in the now. Don't look unto the future. You press towards the mark of the high calling. Forgetting those things that are behind you, pressing towards the mark of the high calling. See, that's a constant, okay? It's not a variable. A variable is uh, where you do it at. <laughs> I could pray in my car. I could pray in the in my bedroom. I could pray in the restroom. I could pray at work. I could pray at the ball field. I could pray at the pizza parlor. See, those are variables, but a constant variable constant variable a constant is that you never forget whose you are and who you belong to mm -hmm. so with that family i just want to say he is merciful to you and i may he be high and lifted up remember how he said it in the scripture moses had to lift up the serpent the brazen serpent on a staff and if Moses could do it, then it says, and the Son of Man should be also lifted up. And he said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So now you know the principle to that. But what you need to see is the other side of what he's drawing. Yeah, he's drawing you closer to him. But are you willing to see what he sees? Are you willing to see what he sees? If you're willing, then you'll see the headstone being capped out of Zacharias. The book of Zechariah talks about the headstone being capped and the two olive trees. May you be Baruch until we see each other again. Shalom. Shalom.